if you are topping the golf ball, you need to understand about swing arc. The swing arc is a circular-ish motion that the club head takes as it travels around the body. The ball is topped when the swing arc bottoms out before the ball rises up and then catches the ball above the equator line. And when it catches the ball above the equator line, all the force is pushed downwards into the ground and you get a top. So in this video, we're gonna figure out why your swing arc might be bottoming out too early and the steps that you can take to correct it. So these are the three situations that you will find yourself in on the golf course. You have a ball on the tee for a driver, a ball on the tee for a fairway wood or an iron, and then a ball off the ground. Now, obviously the ball off the ground, very specifically, you can also have out of the rough and some dodgy lines, but these are the three that you're gonna face. Now, if you're topping the ball, the one off the ground should be the most difficult, the one off a small tee less difficult, and the one off a big tee even less so. That's because golfers instinctively, when the golf ball is on the ground, they wanna try and help the ball up into the air. That's where trusting loft and understanding arc and angle of attack really helps. When we talk about angle of attack, put simply, that's the direction that the club is taking as it comes into impact. So if this iron hits the ball first and then hits the ground afterwards, that would have a negative angle of attack. Let's call that minus five with an A time. So minus five angle of attack, and that's measured in relation to the ground. Now off a small T and off a big T, with the driver, if you get a positive angle of attack, that means the club is bottoming out in its arc before the ball and then moving up into impact. So here's the general rule. Ball off the ground, you want to be hitting down. Ball off a small T, you can hit down or up, especially with a fairway wood. You'll see a lot of the very best players in the world hit the ball first and then the ground with a fairway wood because it's got a little bit more loft. And then with the driver, you want to be hitting up. So let's see how you can plug all of these into your golf swing without topping it. So why would your swing arc be out of whack? We're gonna look at three reasons why that arc is bottoming out too soon and then the steps you can take to correct. So the first one, the most classic one, is trying to help the golf ball up into the air. This is exceptionally common because the golf ball is on the ground and what the golfer's brain says is I need to get it up in the air. The easiest way to do that is to lean back and hit it that way. However, if you think of your sternum as the swing center and my swing center and my swing arc is bottoming out at the ball, if I lean back and try and help the golf ball in the air, all of a sudden my swing center has shifted behind the ball that means my arc bottoms out early and I start to hit up on the shot. So I lean back trying to help the ball up into the air when in fact, it's actually doing the opposite and hitting it down into the ground. So if you are leaning back through impact, what are some of the steps that you can take to help correct that? So I would like you to think of certain parts of your body as more linked. So if you think coming through impact, you've got your shoulder, your left knee and your left foot. If you can feel like you press towards the target during transition, so from the top of the swing into the downswing, you press into that lead foot and you get your lead shoulder, your left knee or right knee if you're a left-hander, your left foot all lined up at the point of impact. Now what that does is it moves you onto your left side and you can't get that left shoulder, left knee and left foot lined up if you're leaning back. So all of a sudden the angles are shifting this way. So a few practice swings, shifting, lining everything up, shifting, lining everything up, and then just with an iron to begin with, just try and repeat that on a shot. Oh, what a strike that was, by the way. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah, was good. This might be slightly counterintuitive, but when we talk about leaning back, that could be caused by going too much forward. Think about it as a spring effect. So if you go too far forwards, the ball gets left behind, you can then start to back up and flick to try and help the ball up in the air. But the same rules apply. Left shoulder, left knee, left foot, covering the golf ball. Another reason that your swing arc might be getting a little bit funky is if you are crumpling up your arms coming through the impact area. So again, if you think of that club moving around the body in its arc, if your arms start to come towards the body at the point of impact in the downswing, that swing arc again is being artificially lifted upwards. The reason a golfer will do this, by the way, is again, the same thing, just trying to get the ball up in the air. 
but we don't want that arc to be moving this way. We want it to be moving down and through the point of impact. And again, very, very simple drill for you to get the feeling of this. If you get set up over the ball, again, I'm using an eight iron here, for example, but a wedge is absolutely fine as well. Posture where the sternum is pretty much directly over the ball. I'm gonna take a half swing away where I turn my chest and I'm getting the club, the hands and the chest all lined up, all in a nice straight line. I'm not hinging my wrist or anything here. Nice straight arms. And I'm gonna practice coming through the ball, striking, and then turning through to the same position. And you can see here, I've turned to the target, left arm, right arm, nice and straight, pointing down towards the flag. Now this is a great drill because if you stop your swing at this point, you can use this as a reference point. If your arms have crumpled up through the point of impact, you can literally just look down and check. Of course you could do this and then like straighten them out artificially if you want to cheat, but you're not gonna do that. So a few of those practice swings, and then all you wanna be doing is just hitting some long chip shots. So turn away, straight arms, straight arms. So it's only a little chip down there. Do that seven, eight, nine, 10, 24 times, and then start moving that into fuller swings and just get the feeling of that extension back and that extension through. Mm, crispy. The last thing we're gonna talk about is the flipperuski. The flipperuski is a very simple movement. It's all about that lead wrist breaking down and getting into this flicking motion here. So as you're coming through, rather than having a nice straight left arm, well, straightish left arm, a firm left wrist lining up nicely with that shaft, your impact position is gonna look a little bit more like this. And again, you can imagine coming through that ball, if there's a sudden flick of that wrist, that completely changes your impact dynamics. That completely changes how that swing arc is gonna be behaving through the ball. I would like you to video your swings to be able to see this a little bit more clearly, but this is quite an easy one to tell if you are doing the flip, because you won't be taking a divot. All you'll be doing, you'll be catching the ball quite clean or even hitting before the ball. And if you don't catch the ground, that's when you might get that top. Very simple drill again. I have here a T-peg, which I'm gonna place in the ground just after the ball, about three or four inches. And my whole goal with this shot is to hit the ball first and then take the tee peg out of the ground afterwards. Because it's very hard to hit the ball, then hit the ground afterwards if that lead wrist is breaking down because the swing arc changes so suddenly. So I'm gonna have to try and practice keeping that left wrist nice and firm, moving down through impact, hitting the ball, and then hitting that tee peg. Absolute pin seeker. And no T. <laughs> now mention it when I talked about T heights, but what about the driver you may say, because don't you wanna be hitting up on the driver? Yes, you do, and all of this remains the same except one key difference. The ball is already teed up in the air, and because the ball is in the air, you can hit upwards because the ground is lower than the ball. But everything else remains the same apart from ball position, because that ball position now is inside the lead foot, so I can get the shoulder, the left knee, the left foot all lined up and still hit up on the golf ball. I can extend, extend, still hit up on the golf ball. The only drill that I can't use with this is hitting the tee peg after the ball. But as long as your sternum stays in a fixed position and you don't lean back and try and pick that ball up, as long as it just stays behind the ball, you know that that club is gonna bottom out before, you're gonna have that impact and then you're gonna be able to hit up and control that spin. I have as well. God, drawn it as well. Oh, it's miles. My angle of attack there was 1.7 degrees on the rise, whereas with a fairway wood off the ground, it might be 1.7 down. If you are interested in learning more how to strike your irons, please check out this video here. Also, we do giveaways every month. Now, to be entered into the giveaway, you need to be a subscriber, like this video, and then get down into those comments, let me know what you think about these tips. Please enter any information that you have yourself about stopping to top the ball, but make sure you use these keywords somewhere in the comment. Top tip for my tops. At the end of the month, every qualifying video using code words, all those comments get entered into a big random generator, a winner gets picked out, and they're in for a great prize. Make sure that bell icon is turned on as well, just to make sure you do get a notification if your comment is replied to. Right, huge thank you for watching. See you next time.